Welcome to the Ascent of Mount Carmel YouTube channel. If you've come here for the Sister Charlotte videos, I encourage you to stick around a little bit and check out the videos on Ascent of Mount Carmel by St. John of the Cross. Today we're going to discuss this photo. At least one YouTube video and several internet sites claim that this is a photo of Sister Charlotte when she was a nun. Of course, in the last video we already proved that Sister Charlotte was never a nun in the first place. Now let's take a look at the photo next to a picture of the real Sister Charlotte. When we look at these two women side by side, we see that they cannot possibly be the same woman. The woman who is a nun has a very strong and square jaw. On the other hand, Sister Charlotte has a very pointy chin. This is not something that would change over time. That doctor took me into the hospital that night and that's where I learned how much I weighed. He weighed me and I weighed exactly 89 pounds. I weigh 178 right now. Sister Charlotte claims that while she was a nun, she was starved. Yet while she was giving her testimony, she says that she was 178 pounds. When we look at these two women side by side, it actually looks like the nun might be better nourished than Sister Charlotte. And then I seemingly got a hold of myself and I thought, dear Charlotte, now you're going to make the best Carmelite nun because everything I've ever done, even that I'm out of the convent, I do give my best. Sister Charlotte says that she was a Carmelite nun. When I look at this photo of this nun, it doesn't look like she's a Carmelite to me. Here's a picture of St. Teresa of Avila. Note that the habits look considerably different. Now don't take just my word for it. Why don't you go to Google and Google Carmelite nun's habit and see for yourself when you click on images. Sister Charlotte said that while she was a nun, she wore the scapular all the time, even while she was bathing. When I look at the photo of this nun, though, I don't see her wearing the Carmelite scapular. If you're like Sister Charlotte and really don't understand what the scapular is about, please check on my video on the scapular. It's linked below. You're lonely anyway because uh, you have no friends in the convent. I'll assure you, even though there was 180 on my particular wing, not one of those nuns were my friend, and neither was I a friend to them because we are not allowed to be friends in the convent. Sister Charlotte said that there were about 180 nuns in her wing of the convent. I'm very fortunate to have Matthew as a subscriber to this channel. Matthew was involved with the secular Carmelites. Before starting this video, I sent him a general email just asking, whether there has been an historic limit on the number of nuns in a Carmelite convent. I'm posting a copy of his response here. According to Matthew, historically, following the reforms of St. Teresa, there has been a cap on the number of nuns allowed, 13 to be precise. Her first reformed Carmelite convent, St. Joseph's in Avila, was founded by St. Teresa and two other nuns from the Incarnation Monastery, and they, with four other nuns, counted seven in this first foundation of discalced Carmelites. So initially the number was 13, and the nun's constitution mentioned it so. However, the number was later revised to 21. Hope this is helpful. If you'd like to know a little bit more about St. Teresa and how she influenced St. John of the Cross, please refer to our earlier video, Who Was St. John of the Cross? It's linked below. So Sister Charlotte says that she was in a wing of a Carmelite convent that had about 180 nuns, but the number of nuns was limited to 21. This is just one indication, and I'll show many others, that Sister Charlotte hardly did any research before she began her road show where she provided her false testimony. She really had only a vague understanding of what Catholicism was about. We'll be back again soon with another installment. The next installment will go back to the census records, newspaper articles, and even draft records, and other vital records, and we're going to thoroughly prove that Sister Charlotte was never even Catholic in the first place. There wasn't a single Catholic member of the family. Then we're going to do another video and try to figure out the motivations why Sister Charlotte would concoct this mess. Then we're going to do another video and show the horrible inaccuracies and falsehoods contained in Sister Charlotte's testimony. In the meantime, please pray for the church and please pray for the repose of Sister Charlotte's soul.